Let's add our search functionality. So when an authenticated user is searching for another user, they type in this input and they submit it. We want to display a list of users that match that query. So let's begin by adding to our text form field the function associated with on field submitted. So this function is going to be called when our form field is submitted with the given text that's typed into it. And we want to associate it with a function which we'll create called handle search. So let's create this handle search function above our build search field function. And what this will do is it's going to take our users ref, which we created in our home page. So we'll need to import our home page. And using it, we want to execute a query. And to do so, we'll use the where method. We want to find any users where their display name, so we'll search on the display name field. And the operator that we'll use is greater than or equal to, to do our text search, the string that's typed into the text form field. And we can conveniently get that from on field submitted. It's automatically passed to the function that we connect to on field submitted. So within the parameters, we get a string, which we'll call query. And so if the display name is greater than or equal to what we wrote into the input, then we want to get the documents and we'll store the results in a variable called users, which again is of type future, which resolves to a query snapshot. And we'll need to import Cloud Firestore to get that type definition. So what we want to do here is we want to store these user documents that are resolved from this query in state. We'll see why in just a second. But we're going to create a piece of state that's called search results future. And this is also going to be of type future query snapshot. So we'll use set state. We'll put users in state by setting it to search results future. And the benefit of this is twofold. Number one, because we're putting our users in state, we can use it later on to determine whether any came back from our request. So this enables us to add a ternary for our body and say, if our search results future is equal to null, then in that case, we want to build and display no content. Otherwise, we want to build our search results. So we're going to execute another function called build search results, which we can create above build. And the second benefit of this is that since we're putting in state a future, we can pass this search results future when we have some results and are displaying build, res build search results, we can pass it to a future build builder to resolve it and display the user documents that we get back. So from build search results, we want to return a future builder. And we know a future builder takes two things. A future is going to resolve the search results future in state. And for our builder function, we're going to get two things in the parameters, context and snapshot. If we don't have any data, if not snapshot dot has data, then we want to return our circular progress and indicate that we're in a loading state. So make sure to import your progress.dart file. Otherwise, we can get our data from snapshot.data.documents. Since this is a list, we can iterate over it with for each. We'll get each document. And here, we want to put our documents into a list of type text. So we'll have a list of text widgets just for now. And we're going to call this search results, and we'll make it an empty list. And then for each document, for each user document that we get, we need to deserialize it. So we need to use user from document to create an instance of user out of it. We'll make sure to bring in our user model. And we'll store this in a variable of type user called user. And then we can take search results and add on to the list this user 
but first we're going to wrap it in a text widget and in particular we're gonna just display their username so we'll pass user dot username to a text widget which will then add to our list and from this future builder we can return a list view with its children being our search results so let's test this out we'll save search.dart and currently in my users collection I have one user with a display name of Reed Barger. So if I type in something less than that, for example, R E E, and hit enter or done on the keyboard, you briefly see the loading spinner. But up at the top in the left hand corner, it might be difficult to see, but we see the text read. So our search is working. We're resolving the search results feature with our future builder. And this is a nice pattern to be able to resolve a future on demand. So note that future builders don't just have to run when they're provided within our build function. We can do them, we can run them conditionally with the help of a ternary or something like that. And now what we might want to do is clear out our search input when we click on this suffix icon button. So to do that, we're going to need a little bit of help. We saw how onfield submitted past the text value that we typed into the input to handle search. However, in order to clear this out, clear out our text, we're going to need to create what's known as a text editing controller. So we'll initialize this widget and immediately put it in a variable called search controller. That's going to be of type text editing controller. And note that we do not have to initialize this widget within an init state function and dispose of it within a dispose function. So now that we have search controller, instead of printing cleared for on pressed for our suffix icon button, we can instead create a clear search function, reference, pass a reference to it, to on pressed, and then we'll make clear search. And all this is gonna do in order to clear out what's typed into our text form field is to take search controller and call on it the clear method. So now when we save search.dart, we can press on our trailing icon button. Oh, I forgot one step, and that is to connect our, we have to connect our controller to our text form field with the controller argument. So once we do that, we can type into our input and clear it out when we click on the trailing icon. So at this point, we have complete functionality for our search page. And in the next video, we're going to see how to improve our user results that we display right here to show more information about the users that we're searching for.